Here we are at Micro Tutorials. Today we're going to be talking about the cost structure of the firm. About midway through the course, this is one of the major sections of microeconomics. We're going to be talking about perfect competition. We're going to be talking about monopoly. But this is the foundation. This is where it all begins. So in the cost structure of the firm, we're going to talk about two different kinds of costs today. Then we'll add them together and get total costs. So the first thing we should mention is what do we mean in this class when we're talking about fixed cost? Let me give you an illustration just to set the tone. Let's say that we have union negotiations going on in our plant and management and labor get together and they come to an agreement and they have a contract. And so over the next three years, uh, by law, by this contract, the labor rate is fixed at, say, $20 per hour including some overtime, that's fixed as well. Now, because that's fixed legally, does that mean it is a fixed cost according to the way our text in economics is talking about fixed cost? And the answer is no. It's not a fixed cost based on what we're talking about here. Now, let me, well, let me get philosophical for a second before I start drawing some graphs on the board. Let's ask the question. Where we're standing right now, or where you're seated right now, um, are you in a fixed location or are you variable in terms of your geography? Are you moving or are you fixed? Um, a friend of mine met his wife, his girlfriend, when he was flying to Oshkosh, and he happened to be flying along with another, with that plane, and he looked over and saw her, and she waved back at him. That was their first meeting in the air. Now, were they moving or were they fixed? Were they in a fixed location or were they moving? Well, you say, well, obviously they're an airplane, so they're moving. But the point that I want to bring up is fixed or variable compared to what? Compared to each other, they're flying along and they are in a fixed location with each other, just like if they were in a passenger airplane sitting beside one another. They're fixed relative to each other in that airplane. But to somebody standing on the ground, they're not fixed. They are moving. They're their location would be variable based upon how far they're going across the sky there, what speed they're traveling. So that's the first point I want to bring up. Notice so far we have had price on this axis, quantity on this axis, and the first thing we need to know is when we talk about fixed or variable cost, it's not in terms of time, like a timed contract for union negotiations. Rather, we are fixed in terms of the quantity that we are producing. So if we're talking, we have to do something else very quickly here. Let me get rid of this P because we can no longer talk about just price on our graph here. We're going to get rid of that P and just put a dollar sign there because we're going to be talking about cost and not just price and quantity anymore. Let me get rid of that P, and from now on we're going to have a dollar sign there, which is going to have both cost and price on this vertical axis. So if we're talking about something that stays the same regardless of quantity, we're talking about some cost amount that as we increase quantity, it stays the same. If a cost stays the same regardless of quantity, we call that a fixed cost. We'll put fixed cost right there. So whether we're producing 1 million units or whether we're producing 1 unit, our fixed cost stays the same. So I hope you get that idea. Now let's, I don't want to go into variable cost yet, but we'll talk about, or average fixed cost yet, but let me talk about variable cost. When we talk about variable cost, our frame of reference is the same thing. It's variable or fixed in relationship to quantity. So a fi what would be a fixed cost? A fixed cost that does not change no matter how many units we produce. How about the rent on the building? We have a building. We have to pay $1,000 a month rent. Whether we produce 1 million units that month, or whether we produce zero units that month, 
that rental price is fixed regardless of any change of output. So this is the output quantity here. Now there's one more, one more, and I only want to keep this to about 10 minutes, so I'm looking at my timer, but it doesn't tell me what I want to know. Uh, the other kind of cost is variable cost. Now with a variable cost, we're talking about things that do change based upon the amount of quantity produced. For instance, the illustration I gave you before, labor is a variable cost. It varies with the output. Obviously, the more units we produce, the more labor we have to put into it. Another thing that is variable cost would be raw material. Raw material also varies with the output. The more units we make, the more raw material we consume, and the more labor we consume. So what would be our starting point? Well, obviously, if we don't produce anything, we haven't used up any labor. We haven't used up any raw material. So our starting point would be right here at the origin. It would always start right there. Now, as we produce something, our first unit, we're going to put some raw material into this thing. That's a cost. We're going to put some labor into this thing. That's a cost. And it goes from this point up to this point. As we produce another one, it goes up and up and up and up. And now we get a curve that looks somewhat like that, if I can draw straight. And we call that curve the variable cost curve. Those are the two primary costs we're, we're talking about here. That's our starting point in our tutorial here. And so we can do one more thing here in this short section and say, oh, well, if there are only fixed cost and variable cost, and we add them together algebraically, obviously what we're going to get is something called total cost. So this is how we would do it algebraically, but can we add those two curves together graphically? Because just as we saw in supply and demand curves, we can take the concepts of law, the concepts of the law of supply and law of demand, and we can draw a graph with them. So how would we add these two curves together, these two curves, to get our total cost curve? Well, if you can imagine that this variable cost curve doesn't weigh very much, and rather than it setting on the ground here, if I pick it up, and put it on top of the fixed cost curve, I would have a curve that goes like that, and that would be my total cost curve. Why? Well, it's no longer down here. I've picked it up, and I've put it right here. So since I've moved it, let me get rid of this curve right here and say all that information is right there. Now we're beginning on top of our fixed cost curve, we add our variable cost on top of it, and we get something called total cost. Well, how would we figure out how much variable cost and fixed cost we would have at any particular output? So let's go to output 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. At output 6, remember these are dollars over here, we could go up, we had our fixed cost curve, and we got our answer over here, that's going to be our $1,000 per month. That's our fixed cost. But at an output of six, what's our variable cost? Well, we go from here straight up, and whatever that price dimension is, that would be our variable cost. So this dimension would be our fixed cost. We add our fixed cost to our variable cost, and we get our total cost curve. So where does this thing come from, this total cost curve? This total cost curve comes from the addition of the fixed cost at that output to the variable cost at that output. And notice once more, as we change the output and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the fixed cost does not get bigger. But as we increase the output, the variable cost gets bigger, and therefore the total cost gets bigger. So if we don't produce anything, we start this company, we don't produce anything, realize we've still got some cost, and that cost is our fixed cost. Very good.